Oh, I, all the dads said hi, and I didn't hear any kids. All right, come on, kids. Ready? Good morning. I can hear your voices. It's so cool. And if you're joining us online, it's so good to have you here today as well. Um, so I uh, love seeing you guys again, and uh, I wish I could like take 10 minutes and talk with all of you, but I don't have the time. So I want to hear from two of you guys. I want to hear from two of you. What is the favorite thing you did with your family since the last time we were together? So raise your hand, and I'll call on two people. Favorite thing you did with your family since we were together last? What? What, what did you guys do? Swimming? That's a good one. We can warm it up. Anybody else? What did you do? To the dollar store. Wow, an amazing adventure with the family. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> oh, man. Well, our kids' service is going to be a little bit shorter because uh, we have to squeeze in two services to one day now. So we're skipping our big picture question. We're going right to our memory verse. This is our last week with this memory verse. Uh, so that means you guys have been practicing it every day at home, right? Okay, cool. So I want to hear how good you guys do. Uh, go ahead and stand up. We're going to do this memory verse together. So you guys should uh, hopefully know it pretty well. Uh, we're going to just do this once. So I'm going to count it off and we'll do the motions together. You ready? One, two, three. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. John 1, verse 1 and 2. Nice job, guys. That one was, it, it was a really tough one. I'll admit that. That was a tough one. Hopefully next, next uh, unit we have a little bit easier one, but you guys did pretty good, so I'm proud of you guys for that. So uh, last week, Last week, we learned about Mary and Joseph taking baby Jesus to the temple. Oh, you can sit down now if you'd like. Taking baby Jesus to the temple to follow God's law and to have him dedicated to the Lord. And we also learned about Simeon, who uh, had received a promise from God that he would see the Messiah before he would die. And he recognized Jesus, held him, and worshipped him. We also learned about Anna, who was a prophetess, who also recognized Jesus and told other people about him when she saw him there. And so last week we talked about baby Jesus, and at Christmas we talk about baby Jesus, but all the other times we usually talk about grown-up Jesus, right? But Jesus was fully and totally human, so in between baby Jesus and grown-up Jesus, what do you get? Kid Jesus, teenage Jesus, oh, hormonal Jesus. Uh, <laughs> there's, so Jesus was a kid too, just like you guys. Jesus was every one of your ages at some point, and he grew up, took just as long to grow up as you did. So sometimes maybe you're like, man, I wish I could grow up. Jesus took just as long to grow up as you did. So he was a kid. So today we're learning about what the Bible tells us about when Jesus was a kid. So after Jesus was born, God put a star in the sky and there were wise men who followed this star, and they came to worship Jesus. And they showed up around when Jesus was one or two, and uh, they, they showed up and they worshipped him. And the wise men knew that Jesus was king. But now is where things actually started to get tough for Jesus. You see, his childhood wasn't just uh, people worshipping him the whole time, although because he is God, he's worthy of that, but things got tough. When the wise men left, his father, Joseph, had a dream where an angel told him, said, hey, you need to take Mary and Jesus, and you need to get out of town. You need to leave because bad things are going to happen, and you need to go to Egypt until I tell you to come back. And so he grabbed uh, Jesus and Mary and, and Joseph, and they all ran away to Egypt because there was a man named Herod. Everybody say Herod. One, two, three. Herod was an evil king at the time. He was an evil, evil man. And he wanted Jesus dead. Because he knew that Jesus was the king, just like the wise men, because they had talked to him, said, we're coming to worship the king. And he did, Herod did not want there to be another king. So what he actually did, he wanted Jesus dead so bad that he ordered for every boy in the age of two or younger to be killed. This was an awful, 
awful, evil, evil thing that Herod did, but Jesus and his family escaped this because they were away in Egypt because the angel had warned them to leave. And so for many years, Jesus and his parents were refugees. They were driven out of their homes by violence and death, and they had to live away from their home and the people that they cared about. But eventually Herod died, and they were allowed to come back, and they came back to Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. So they came back after Herod died, and they were no longer in danger to Nazareth. Let's say Nazareth. One, two, three. Nazareth. Nice job. So uh, every year, Mary and Joseph... Uh, would travel to the capital city of Jerusalem. Here's another name, Jerusalem. Let's hear it. One, two, three. Jerusalem. Nice. That's a tough one. So they travel to Jerusalem for the biggest festival in the Jewish year. So, you know, Christmas is our biggest, like, holiday we have, right? The biggest holiday for them is called Passover because they celebrated when God passed over them when he was setting them free from captivity in Egypt. And so Passover, they were coming to celebrate. Almost the entire country would come to Jerusalem. So this is Passover. Say it. One, two, three. Passover. So they came for this holiday and there were tons and tons of people there. They did all the celebrations. They did all the partying. And then when it was time to go home, Mary and Joseph left town with uh, this very large group of people. They would, everybody from the same town would walk together. So them and everybody else from Nazareth were walking home, and they walked, and when the end of the day came, it was time for them to find Jesus and make their little camp and, and go to sleep for the night. But they're looking around, and they couldn't find Jesus. So kids, here's what I need you to do. If you can fit under the chairs, go ahead and get under a chair, or just go right behind it so your parents can't see you. Hide under a chair, kids. Get under there, get under there, hide, hide. So when it was time for them to find Jesus, they were looking around. They couldn't find him among all the people who were traveling. So moms, moms, I want to hear uh, your best look around, and I want to hear the moms say, have you seen Jesus? One, two, three. Have you seen Jesus? They couldn't find their son. And so they realized, oh no, we left him in Jerusalem. So they turned around and they went all the way back to Jerusalem. They traveled a whole day back, and when they got there, they looked around, but Jesus was only 12 years old. He was a, a young boy in the city all alone, and his parents looked for three days, and they couldn't find him. For three days. So they were getting so concerned. The dads were going around. So let me hear the dad say, uh, let's hear the dad say, have you seen my son? One, two, three. They were going everywhere, losing their minds. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? They couldn't find him. And then finally... They actually went to check the temple. They went to the temple, and they found him just sitting there talking with the priests who were teaching, and he was asking questions, and all the priests who were there were amazed at all the things that Jesus understood and the good questions that he had. So they found him, so kids, you can come back up and get back in your seats. You can get out of the chairs now, come back out of hiding. And let me tell you, Mary and Joseph were so scared, they were so afraid, I don't know if any of you, have, your parents, have ever lost you for a little bit, but if they, if they freak out a little bit, it's just because they love you so much and they want to keep you safe. And so when Mary finally found him, she ran up to Jesus. She said, oh, this is out of Luke chapter 2, she said, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. They were so worried. But Jesus replied, he said, why were you searching for me? He asked them. Didn't you know that it was necessary for me to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he told them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with the Lord. And so uh, Jesus was in the temple because he is the son of of God. He said he was there to be in his father's house, and he was comfortable there learning and, and uh, growing more and more in uh, his faith and knowing the scriptures. So um, Jesus was obedient to his parents when they found him, and he went with them. It wasn't like he was hiding on purpose, and he wasn't being a disobedient son, uh, but he went back with them, and he grew in wisdom. 
Jesus was always obedient to his father, and uh, he was obedient to his earthly parents, but uh, even as a child, Jesus wanted to do his father's plan. And um, so in the video, Pastor Brian talked about uh, being nervous about talking to people about Jesus and being obedient. And uh, if you read uh, towards the end of Jesus's life, there are definitely some times when Jesus was nervous about even following his father's plan. And so it is totally normal and totally okay to be nervous to tell people about Jesus. Now, for me personally, it's really easy for me to tell people about Jesus here in church, right? But like outside those doors, let me tell you, there's some times when I get pretty scared to talk about Jesus. I really do. But uh, God doesn't get mad at us for getting nervous or getting scared when the time comes to talk about Jesus. But it's still our mission to be courageous and to be brave and uh, to tell people about what Jesus has done for us and about what Jesus can do for them. And remember, the Holy Spirit is with you to help give you that courage and help to bring things to mind that you can tell to other people about Jesus. So let's pray together and let me pray for us to be brave for Jesus. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus was always obedient to your plan. And I pray that you would empower us by your Holy Spirit to also obey when we have times that we can share Jesus with those who need to hear. Pray that you would help us to be brave and courageous, and uh, we trust you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.